It's a touch. Going up to your bedroom on my life. We're at broken hair. We make full taxidermy. Um, so everything's sculpted in clay and all, all the hairs are added. So we're sort of uh, a vegan, vegan taxidermy. All vegan, yeah. vegan taxidermy. All, all done. We've been going six years. I yeah. uh, used to be a prop maker in, uh, for TV and, and stuff like that. But um, now we're just doing this business from the lovely Tudor Lane. It is a gallery in itself. What's the weirdest thing someone's asked for? <laughs> A beaten up llama corn. We had this animal we've done, a beaten up llama corn. Do you do yeah. like fish and uh, any animals? I, I have done like a fish as a prop, but like, a prop. the scales take ages yeah. to sculpt, so you have to put a price on that then. And what about yeah. a, a hairy toad fish? Not a hairy toad. <laughs> What's a hairy toad? I'll show you. He's going to show you his hairy yeah. toad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, should we end on that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
We are varying degrees of temperature. All right, so a, team a of the year, run. an alternative way team of, of team the year. Of, by the way, since we did that tepid 11, oh, here we go. all the press don't jumped just, on it. Don't put Sugar Shane Long in this. All the press your jumped on it. Year. They did their great. own version of. They did. A few people did nick our idea. Yeah. No mind. Yeah. Anyway, Fourth we're, we're going to do a team of the year. Who was, um, who was the keeper for into the actual team? I of the can't year? remember who the keeper was. It was Alex. <laughs> 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 it was it Edison. Was it Edison? Edison. It was Edison or Alison. And that should be Edison. Okay. Because right. I, in my alternative, I'd keep him there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> you, you, it was not, in your alternative. Think, think. Not, so he's got Edison. Think, right, or Fabian. Don't you think maybe. with a goalkeeper? He should automatically be the keeper that's kept the most clean sheets. Yes, I've gone Alisson as my team, my keeper of the year. And I said last week, Interesting. Or I said the week before, actually, when we were talking about goalkeepers, it was with Heaney, when we went, did it with, with Tommy. And I said that Alisson was a better keeper than Edison. And we had a debate, about, had a debate about it, because you think the opposite. opposite. And I was like, yeah. Alisson's the best Absolute keeper. Opposite. For me, right now, is the second best keeper in Europe, and therefore the world when it comes to football in terms it is because Come on. The, well, there's no one in North America challenging in well, the so world. It. It's I reckon he's the second greatest. If it weren't for Jan Oblak, you f you forget about like other European keepers, right? They're having blinding seasons. Yeah, anyway, look. If the for an alternative, if it's not Edison, who's your keeper? If it's not Edison, it's, 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 it's Alison. It's either Alison or the City. So we've both gone Alison, you've gone Edison. So this is, this, is, this is the other part of the goalkeeper debate, yeah, right? Yeah, so it's either not so clean sheets what's your measurable sheets. What's your measurability? Because yeah, yeah. if we're going clean sheets yeah. as well as like having that influence, that's yeah. one thing. If we're going yeah. on mm -hmm. saves alone, mm -hmm. that doesn't quantify it because yeah. there's a lot of goalkeepers who are good shot stoppers who have the better uh, defenders right. in front of can I, can I throw out that you're going down a goalkeeper wormhole here? Okay. Uh, right backs. Give me your right backs. <laughs> uh, Wan Bissaka. Okay. Now he's my. Doherty slash Bissaka. I've gone Doherty. He's my young player of the year, he is. Yeah, he's going brilliantly. Absolutely. He's a brilliantly. He's got so, such little player, yeah. expectation on him as well. Um, I've gone Doherty because I think Doherty's okay. had a great year. And I think they both have cooled off a little bit, but they're both brilliant. But I just would choose Doherty in my team. Genuinely. Okay, would anyone over. choose anyone, anyone different than Virgil van Dijk? No. Right. Mm. Who, before we, sorry, who was the right back in the PFA team? Trent. It was Trent. Uh, I, was I, Trent. Trent. Okay. I would go Trent. I would go Trent. So well. you go Trent. Okay, yeah. so you've I'd got go Trent, yeah. Trent and you've got Alisson. I've got Docty, you've got Aaron Ramsack, yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, and we all got Virgil van Dijk in our teams? Yeah. Yes. I've yeah, got okay, Digne. that's fine. We don't need to. <laughs> I've got Digne. you got Lu you've got Luca yeah. Digne? Yeah. Luca Digne yeah. made me cry almost because of his fantasy football ineptitude yeah. at then one point. He beasted the. the I took him out of my season. team and he scored the goal. So no, Luca Digne is not him. No, Luca Digne is not my team. That's just out of spite, though, because you, yeah. you're letting fantasy you football get in hatred. the way. That's what that is. Nah, forget him. Oh, uh, I've go. gone uh, Andrew Robertson left back. If we're doing left backs, who's your centre back? Though? My other centre back is uh, Amir at Laporte. But that's just the doubt. He, he was in the. You just, you just say Laporte. it's not an alternative. L yeah, but that's. I agree with him. I think Laporte. We all went Virgil van Dijk. I've gone Laporte and Robertson. I've agreed with them Andrew every other place. We're not going Phil Jones. <coughs> no, we're definitely not. No not one's going Phil, Phil Jones, Jones or Chris, Chris Morley. Morley. No, no Chris one's Morley. going. Um, has yeah. anyone got Mustafi? <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no one got Left Mustafi. Backs. Robertson. Andrew Robertson. Andrew Robertson's yeah. I would say better. Robertson as well. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, midfield. This is where my team goes a little bit. All right, so if, if, like, let me just stop. If we're going full crooks on this, if we're going full Garth crooks, I would yeah. choose less. I would just load it full of attacking mids. But you can't do that because it, it's not it's not a true okay, point. Right. I'd have Fabinho, uh, F sorry, Fernandinho, either Fernandinho and yeah. Fabinho in in as centres, depending on that. You have Fabinho in your team. Maybe yeah. maybe then I'd consider Neves and then uh, Bernardo Silva. I do think he's justified being there. So who pick two then? Give me your two centre mids. I think two to go in your team in the year. But are these defensive midfielders. Doesn't matter. It's your team. You build. Who's your defensive? So I. So this is the thing, right? It depends, on, it depends on. Right. Yeah. You're not I'm building. Not so you're building. Not, you're not building. You're playing on Super Sunday. You. You just say who is the the balanced, the most best at times. You yeah. can't pick nine forwards, okay. obviously. But can we you put a some, you know, some, and Neves then? Okay, they're both great choices. I, maybe an unpopular opinion. I thought Fernandinho was great for the first half season. What has he done the second half season? Yeah, he's Can I sat on a bench injured. I've got yeah. Well, he's he's Neves, hundred percent for me. When he plays though, Fernandinho, 
they make <coughs> he makes Man City look even better and they're great without him and they find a way but with Fernandinho it's the one position I think Man City should be concerned with and I think it's where they'll strengthen this summer I think they'll go for a, a younger <coughs> more another young defensive midfielder uh, to cover for Fernandinho that's the only place we're going to but I have gone Fernandinho in my so side I've already gone with one and I've gone so with Neves in the running I'd Neves. Say, I, uh, Neves was on the outskirts Fabinho, of mine and Madison has been like, a, a fantastic can I, can I stop you yeah go on <laughs> can I tell you my other centre mid because I'm yeah. Yeah, I've, this is where my team goes a little bit weird uh, Edin Hazard's playing centre mid yeah but he would for me as well because I'd only play one holding and then I'd have boys in front yeah, because so, you can't fit them on the left because you'll have what Salah Hazard, or Mane Hazard, okay. or Son well. right, or Sterling me, right so I've gone uh, four with two wing backs then I've gone two centre mids then I've gone a you put number, into this yeah thing. a number eight see so if I say number eight you all know what a number eight is on the pitch yeah yeah you don't get it so he's number eight and then I've got an eleven and a, and a seven and then I've gone a, a, a striker because I can't fit these players in just have so then say your names say your uh, names. Son Mane Sterling Salah well, that's exactly what I got. And I got with Aguero. Hazard in there. Hazard playing centre mid with yeah. Fernandinho. I'm going to try and shoehorn that's Aguero pretty, in there as well. Much, that's pretty much what I've gone with as well. I think Aguero? Kuminsen, no, no Aguero. Me. Right. Me. Annoyingly, not he's why the player that I yours? can't no. get in. That's literally it. Because he should though go in over Sun, shouldn't he? Surely based on Sun and Aguero are the only two that I would consider. You put and then I'd place Aguero over Sun. No, Sun over Aguero. Sun over Aguero. Yeah. Mm, At the minute. That's no, it's, it's debatable because the only thing that I would say is when Aguero, it, it's probably he's probably it's a side effect of Man City if I'm being honest. Because what I find is when when Aguero doesn't play for Man City, they're still brilliant. When Harry Kane didn't play for Spurs, you were genuinely worried for him. Yeah, yeah? Hyunmin Sun has played yeah. this season Not and right, he's yeah. basically gone. That person you thought was irreplaceable because yeah. he's injured. Yeah, I'll replace him. Human set has been phenomenal and has a massive yeah, impact this first. Yeah, I genuinely think if it wasn't for him, they would be so outside Eric, the top five. Eric, Ericsson's had a great season as Ericsson well. Ericsson has, but Ericsson's been in patches. Sun I agree. has He's been, been in patches this year, yeah. Also, he went away, he, was he playing, came back he and went, I haven't got to go in the army, I love, I'm going to have a great Sun's, time. <laughs> Sun's story is phenomenal. Yeah, Sun's story he literally is, is went awesome. away. Go went, through that. So on that, okay, I, I, I can see I'd love to have Sergio Aguero in my side. I just said have before, him on the bench because Milner's on my bench. It's him or Sun. <laughs> right, okay, I'll have him on the bench. Because I love Sergio Aguero and I think he is, as I've said before, I think he's the greatest player to ever play top flight it football in England. But he's not in the team. Great striker ever. It, but I can't fit him in. I think a big shout out to Hung Min Sun then. Yeah, Hung Min Sun. Mm, that is liquid football and podcasting. <sighs> Best title race in Premier League history, agreed. Phenomenal. A t- yeah, as far as title races in recent history go, the only like one. everyone harks back to like the Leicester season. But this is actually that wasn't a race, is it? No, it's not a race, but it's something yeah. completely different. Yeah, this yeah. is the first which has really sparked everyone's imagination. You know what's going to be really good? Oh, it might not. Don't get me wrong. Next weekend, the next round of results, it could result in what I'm about to say become null and void. But it could come down to you said this last week no it could come down to the last game of the season for both the last relegation place and the title yeah it can yeah yeah if Cardiff win that win. is I, I, that's all I want like now of this season because being a Man United fan I've always said I don't care if, who wins the league if it's not Man United I'm not interested so anyone can win it as far as I'm concerned and I'm going to go into that like, last game thinking we don't know who's the league title holder and we don't know who's been relegated. It's yeah. the last game of the season. Brilliant. That is a season. That's how it's meant to be. Yeah. It wasn't this last year. We no all knew got a great everything. race for fourth as well. Really. A really, really good yeah. race. No one wants it, do they? Yeah, because <laughs> no you look it. now at the race for fourth, you think, okay, Man United have been shocking recently. They're really bad. They don't deserve to be in the top four. Even if they do, they don't deserve <clears> to be in it because they haven't been good enough. And what we des- need to do now is quite evident: get rid of a lot of players. The way that Let's best way to do it, to no, the, the, the way to do here. that quickly is to not have Champions League football, because lots of players will leave, exactly what and I bring thought. in younger, hungry players who want to prove themselves. Pro- promote from the youth. That's how it should be done. Um, Arsenal are doing, you know, all they, right. They, all of those yeah, teams are doing all right. They're doing all right, but they're, it's to, it, it's, it's, they're going for the European Cup. 
like that is it Chelsea, and so Chelsea Arsenal. as well yeah. like if you get a cup yeah, they're that, in the that, that cup is no longer they in the final that'd be amazing well this is the first year great. as yeah. well that it be could be oh it could it, yeah, it still could be it could be yeah. two English um, yeah. clubs in both major European finals yeah so yeah. that's oh. phenomenal that'd it's a great show. season all around then it shows the strength but while of, Arsenal, of and, and Arsenal and Chelsea are doing that in the Europa League they're being equally consistently inconsistent with Man United I think there's a lot of rebuilding Wolves, man, if Wolves have got their act together a bit more against the lower teams they could easily and I mean it they could easily be challenging that fourth position this, se- this season they've fallen away the last yeah like, and they it's a rebuilding job away. that, that yeah. like, a lot of the the, the, the the usual suspects are doing like there's not enough time that's actually been given to Sari yet we all know when I am is just just building something yeah. like for the next step and the next yeah. step getting some consistent we all know where the, where where the where the issues are there and it's the same with Man United unfortunately but because they're in the, the public eye more they get they get more abuse yeah. because of it like I was saying and it really annoyed me last week because no it's just so football moves so quickly and it's so fickle yeah. that one week you yeah. could be in playing PSG and then like everyone gives a standing ovation to Lionel yeah. Messi uh, performance and then the next week you hit two bad results yeah and then you're you're in and everything's rubbish again and everyone's against you and Football that is, is that, that, like that, that's that's yeah, yeah I the problem like, that how you would you do that well. and then jump on the negativity spot and then you're done so it's just the way it is but this season those two clubs are pushing like it's just toe to toe yeah it is look the thing is is I think Spurs have been lucky this season because they are exhausted. They're depleted. They're depleted. They're because, well, we said this right from the start. We said those players had a very long season last season playing for Spurs. Yeah. Then they had a lot of players who got into the latter stages of the World Cup. And they got I back think, early. I think they That's did what well considering forget. their squad. Really well, interesting. they brought them back early from the World Cup. They actually played yeah, three like, weeks when, earlier when than expected. When Kane went, went down and everyone was like, what are you Which what are we gonna do? <laughs> Well, this is it. But he needed, he needed a long up? rest. After so the two World people have stepped up in that situation. And that's why he's got injured this team. season so much. Mm. So he needed Hung a long rest. Son, we've, we've shown our support for him, but Lorente as well. Like considering the fact he's that he's done okay, he? imagine he's having done to okay. step in. You yeah. you know yeah. your place. You have to step in. You have to just get the it. The problem that I have with that thought, though, is Lorente. Too many people, when they've said about this, have got hung up on the fact that he's ex Swansea. He also played in a Champions League final as a Juventus player. But you know, like Morientes coming to the league. Yeah, no one but knows that's what, what I'm saying. Is he, and a lot of people have been like, "Oh, he's yeah. he's second choice striker," and it's like, don't <coughs> underestimate Fernando Lorente because he's got a very, very, very capable pedigree at his time but in you Spain. Get, and if in you Italy. get strikers, if they are not at the top of their game when they come to this country, they will get found out. Frequently. And I I think that's massive in this country. It, every strike you can name off. Torres, you know, Shevchenko, well, Shevchenko, Torres, Crespo. Torres just—it was the they dominated Europe, didn't they? They dominated Europe. Yeah. yeah, the Torres thing. We all—he just fell out of love with football. We know say, that. Saying he, that, he though, fell out of love with football. Saying that, I <clears> wouldn't <throat> feel too sorry for Spurs because it's just shown with probably what a quarter of the budget Ajax of yeah. what they've done. Yeah. And so the disparity yeah. Yeah. between between the two, it just shows the difference. Like they're not like, I think he was absolutely justified. Ajax. Uh, they said well, it's amazing yeah okay yeah they are they're doing great things they are, uh, but it, Ajax it, are my favorite really, side in Europe to watch it really like stands out when you consider what they're working with and their system really mm. shining through and those players look absolutely incredible every yeah. single one of them in comparison to like a depleted yeah, Spurs team, the where they fault. play exactly the same way from the, the moment they start their competitive wonderful football. to watch yeah so when the 13 is all the way up and it's, it shows massively it's all, look, it this shows is, massively we've had now I know look I know that I don't work <coughs> for a professional football club no one's put me in charge of one however I can show you examples of when they've changed the way that the youth team plays and they play the same way throughout and how successful that's been at Ajax in the 70s and the Cruyff years you know uh, Barcelona under Guardiola did it United did it under Ferguson Okay, I know I don't work in football, but why wouldn't you be doing that? Like I'm talking like PSG here and it's short term like, versus long term. And yeah, when you consider, yeah. like the famous quote, "You won't win anything with kids," which yeah. is widely been disproven and widely detrimental to youngsters coming through. Instead, you've got like, say Rashford, for example. Yeah. He should be a, held a high esteem for, for the for the potential that he's shown and what he's showing right now, but not enough credit due to that factor of like supporting the youth. Mbappe in a, in, a, in a World Cup final 
Oh, look, we talked about Mbappe. Mbappe came in at 17 and got in Monaco into the Champions League yeah. semi final. So you can and win then, anything with youth? Yeah, when exactly. you, when you rise 17, up. and that season, Monaco knocked out Spurs and Man City. Mm. And Mbappe then went for a huge transfer fee to PSG, like a combined, I think it was like 180 million or whatever. And they said, How is he going to handle the pressure? And he signs for PSG in 18, he scores Aptrick on his debut. You know, it's his first, his first game so, in the PSG shirt. So that's, a, that's a little chat on uh, Liverpool and City then. Reader's Wives. What is Reader's Wives? Are you familiar with our Reader's Wives? No wife? idea, what is it? Okay, Reader's Wives is essentially question and. Raj, long time listener, came okay. in on Twitter. Oh. This is uh, a Gattuso, looking like he might kill you. Uh, Jordan Lloyd, Jordan friend Lloyd. of the show. Uh, Phil Jones, the face would regularly change, but would always be comedy gold. Uh, Nathan... Nathan. Um, Nathan, friend of the show again. Peter Squash Crouch, treated. he says that giant specimen of a human in the corner of your living room would be yeah, special. Well. We've got his family <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of giraffes here, so we're halfway there. Or Pielo or Buffon for the obvious reasons, their majestic beauty. Jamie Welsh Ice, thank you, Jamie. Thank got you. an easy question. The magnificent beast that is Steve Grizzaby. Mitchell Lewis, Ga and he did say, he did say, uh, Ian. City in a Dowie. City in a Dowie. Uh, Chris Etchingham, host of Man on the Post podcast. I'd have Gary Lineker, so I could somewhere to hang my yeah, coat and car keys. Andrew, Sco Scrumpy Moe on Twitter, friend of the show. Rory Delap's arms. Nice. Uh, you said Gareth Bale. Yeah, I did. You said Gareth Bale. He's a chimp like feature. The Gormisaurus, the official mascot of the uh, uh, can I say the line, right? Who's been with us is pretty much his day, answer right? last week is if, if you haven't. Go on, to, go on to see you it. Go back and listen. Go that was the, the Paddy episode, the Ben Jam special. Ben Jam special. Just he's a, yeah, okay. He's renowned, this, renowned. He's, this week he says, Viali, sexiest man in football. He, then, I don't get that. Well, he gave us two answers. Do you want to know his other one? Yeah. Bear in mind, he said Jean-Luc Jean 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 Viali. Bear in mind. Second answer, Vinnie Jones, dancing Roger Miller. That's from our host, a broken Roger Miller. At the World Cup. Right? <laughs> the Italia 90. That'd be a good one. That'd be a great one. When your nan walks in, just press the button. Yeah, you can dance. Maradona, coke to the gill. <laughs> can, can I give you Diego Maradona, coke to the gills at USA 94. That game when he scored and he goes to the so camera. Like... And that when he's yelling at the camera, that one, and the drug testers went, drug test him after this game. Kiss the rain, wherever you need me. Kiss the rain, whenever I'm gone too long. You good? Yeah. We could, I did, I'm ready. That was mad he that he ran all that spite. way to celebrate right in front of us. I remember that happening yeah. and just thinking, what? Yeah. remember the game that came out? Someone released yeah, a game true. where you were added by your, it was on a computer and you thing, just yeah. had to Double tap two keys. I don't remember that. Yeah, oh, like, double tap if two you had an keys. office job, if you had then an you office definitely job, played yeah, that and game. it wasn't yeah. banned. It was you double tap like that an and it made out of your run. Yeah. And then when you got to the end, you had to press enter and, and that's slide and get into a zone. Yeah. And, and then, then the Arsenal fans would throw chairs at you. It's time for a little bit of feedback. I love feedback. It's my favourite section. Hey, it's I'm important. Feedback family. We learn, we grow. We learn, we grow. We learn. Yeah. We grow. We do grow. This week we've got here. a few, I'll just buzz through a few. Okay. Lists too Who's long. been in touch this week? I Peggy Arfikstad. Yeah? Says, great chat. And he's, uh, there's the clap emoji. I don't know if it's clap or pray, but he's gone Which with one? Is, a hand, is it hands here? Hands, or is it hands, hands here? here. Uh, hands in here? Yeah. It's said to be a that's, high five, isn't it? Th there's is a that, pray one, but there's also one with slightly angled. Is it? What's, and that's, is that's, there a, yeah, that's so a clap there, Yeah. So anyway, clap. Peggy Arfikstad says, yeah. great chat, that emoji. Virgard Hegem just says get in. Paul Scholes, more sections on anti gambling, please. Paula One Chop says perfect. Robert Prosnecki just says liquid football podcasting. Paul Scholes has come in with the anti gambling again. I mean, he Second must really time. enjoy that section. I think he needs it. Time to say goodbye for another Sometimes. week. Another week. It's gone. Good one this week. Thank you very much to Broken Hair for letting us record at this ridiculously cool place. This is the coolest place that I've ever been. Like it's mad that we're here. Uh, thank you very much, Adam. <laughs>
to the bedrooms. What an amazing staircase. Here's your hallway, and there's your stairs going up to the bedrooms. Okay, lack of stairs. You've got your stairs going up to your bedrooms. Okay. We're straight into a small porch here, and you've got your stairs right in front of you going up to the bedroom. There are the stairs going up to the bedroom. Nice.